Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel X Gene and Protein X. In this tutorial video, I'm going to talk about competence cells. So, first, I'll discuss about the overview of the competence cells and then I'll talk about the protocols of making competence cells using calcium chloride. Let's begin. So, first, we have to know that what is competence cells. So, competence cells or cell competence it refers to a cell's ability to take a foreign or extracellular DNA from its surrounding environment. So there are two different terms related to the competence cells. Those are first one is the natural cell competence. And it is determined that a bacterium is genetically predisposed to take up free genetic material that exists within their environment. So this extracellular DNA is taken up by this bacteria. But DNA taken up by a naturally competent cells does not always become incorporated into the cell's genome. And the second one is the artificial or induced cell competence. So this is actually the, the researchers have made competent through electrical or chemical manipulation to increase the permeability. So as you see in this picture that this is the non-competent cells but in the competent cells so in the non-competent cell there in the cell membrane there is no pore but so it is not permeable but in case of the competent cells uh, the cell membranes contain pores so it uh, has the higher permeability. So, so normally researchers use uh, there are two different processes like electroporation or chemical process to make pore into the cell membrane. So as you see here that these pores are created after making the competent cells. And there are different kind of chemical uh, chemical used for making the competent cells but most commonly use calcium chloride and by this process the it uh, competent cells it creates temporary pores in cells membrane in order for DNA to pass through there are also some other chemicals that also use in case of the competent cells preparation so as you see in this picture that non-competent cells in this non-competent E. coli, so extracellular DNA, it cannot allow to pass through the cell membrane because it is not permeable. But in case of the competent E. coli, it makes pore. This is why it is higher permeability and the extracellular DNA, it can easily pass through the cell membrane. Although there are many naturally occurring competent cells, but E. coli is, is not naturally competent. Therefore, in order to use the cells of E. coli for cloning, researchers must induce competence in, in the E. coli. So next is the list of salts and chemicals that are used to make chemically competent cells. Those are, first one is a very common that is a calcium chloride that neutralizes the negative charges of the phospholipid bilayer and DNA. So I will discuss the mechanism of this calcium chloride, how it works. So in the later on, I'll I'll discuss about that. The next one is the DMSO. DMSO also it um, it actually it weaken the forces. And magnesium chloride it also works the same, similar way as calcium chloride. PEG it also uh, seals the negative charges of the phospholipid bilayer and DNA. And the next one is the RBCL. It also works the same way as calcium chloride and magnesium chloride. But this is the higher efficient. People who want to use higher efficient transformation process need to use the RBCL compared to the other chemicals. And next is the what role does calcium chloride play making competent cells? Let's have a look. So as you see in this picture, this is the before calcium chloride treatment. So as you know that the the cell content the phospholipid. And because of the phospholipid, cells are negatively charged. But as well as 
in the DNA there is a phosphate group so this is why also DNA it is negative charged so this is why there are some repulsion occurs because both are negative charged so there are some repulsion occurs this is why foreign DNA it cannot find into the equalized cell membrane because of the repulsion but what happens after calcium chloride treatment so after calcium chloride treatment calcium this is the positively charged so it must it neutralize the negative charged in both cases like in DNA as well as in the cell membrane so the calcium it neutralize the negative charged and eliminate this natural repulsion as a result it allow DNA to move closer to the cells and bind into the cell membrane as a result it can easily pass through the cell membrane so this is how calcium chloride it works and next is the we know the heat shock very much oil and this is used for the transformation process during transformation we do it so what is the mechanism for the heat shock actually so the bacteria when we put into the water bath at 42 degree centigrade like from 0 to 42 degree centigrade right so sudden uh, sudden uh, rise of the temperature so this is why heat proteins it induced heat shock proteins that induced and immediately we put it into the onto the ice so there is the sudden temperature drop from 42 to 0 degree centigrade so this is why some pores created onto the cell membrane and there are some research it's already studied and that they found that there are some reason behind this creating pores by heat shock and those are the release of lipids and consequent formation of pores on the cell surface so so because of this heat there are some release of lipid from the cell membrane and that makes the formation of pores on the cell surface and another one is the lowering the membrane potential in the cell membrane this is why it also makes a pore into the cell membrane so this is why heat shock it creates pore into the cell membrane and then the DNA it can easily pass through the cell membrane so this kind of pores it makes higher transformation rate next I will look the protocol to make a competent cells using calcium chloride so first I have to incubate that E. coli cells I incubate 37 degree centigrade 150 rpm for overnight around 16 to 17 hours and then we have to um, from there from this bacteria take around 0.5 ml to the new fresh 50 ml LB media and remember that for if you use 50 ml LB so we have to use 200 ml conical flux so around one fourth and next process is the harvest the cells and then you have to incubate it 37 degree centigrade 150 rpm for 100 to 120 minute and next process you have to transfer this broth into the cent sterile centrifuge tube and centrifuge around 6000 rpm for 8 minutes and 4 degree centigrade and next process is to then you have to discard the supernatant and resuspend the cells in 20 ml of ice cold 50 millimolar calcium chloride and incubate on ice for 20 minutes and next is and then collect the cell by centrifugation at 6000 rpm so from here you have to collect it and then you have to centrifuge it 6000 rpm for 8 minutes at 4 degree centigrade the same condition and next step is the then again you have to discard the media discard the supernatant and resuspend the cells in 2.5 ml of ice cold 50 millimolar calcium chloride so here is the 20 ml 
I scored 50 ml, but in this step you have to use 2.5 ml calcium chloride. And then from here, you can use directly from here around 100 microliter for the transformation. But if you would like to store it, then you can also store it by adding just 10% glycerol into it and then you can store it in minus 20 or minus 80 for a longer time period. So I hope this video will be helpful. If you like this video, kindly hit the like button, share it and if you have any comments, please write in the comment section and if you really think that this video is helpful, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thanks.